Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. This is a short video explaining what you get when you purchase our calibration procedure, SYS016, so our 16th procedure. In the background, I show you the page for our SOPs if you want to purchase our turnkey quality system or look for other procedures. I'll take you to that screen in one second. Okay. So here is our SOPs page where you can purchase our uh, turnkey quality system. And down at the bottom of that page, you see all the list of the procedures. Procedure number 16 is calibration. And if I take you to that page, here's the page. And you can purchase this procedure just by clicking on add to cart and the shopping cart comes up here. Now we have coupon codes, there's two of them. If you click here, you'll see both of them. Uh, this one is for our marketing person that's uh, promoting a procedure of the month. Uh, right now, the procedure of the month is our labeling procedure. By the time you listen to this, probably be some other procedure. Um, but this one is available all the time. It's when you purchase more than a certain dollar amount of procedure. So three or more gets you to that amount. So if you purchase two other procedures, you get a 20% discount. So you click on that, apply. And it gives you an error message because there's only one in my shopping cart right now. But if I went back to the page that had our, um, our uh, turnkey quality system, and I added to it the whole entire quality system, that would bump up my amount so it exceeds the limit. And now when I click on that code and apply, now it applies the discount. So any Three procedures will get you to that discount. Now let's show you what's in that procedure, but um, I'll take you back to the calibration procedure page for one moment. And I wanted to show you a couple of things that are on that page. Number one, ISO 1345, 2016. I provide a link here, and this will take you to a page on our website where we actually have some training on ISO 1345 and it explains that below. Close our shopping cart here so that doesn't always show up. So it gives you all the content of the training that we provide on ISO 1345, both your stage one readiness audit for certification and your stage two final audit for ISO 1345 certification. And there's also a training exam and certificate you can get. The next link you see here, this references uh, calibration requirements. So if you click on this, it's going to take you to an Estonian website. This is the website where we found we can get a lot of European standards for less cost than we can from other sites. So if you go to iso.org, you're going to pay more for this. This site, we can get it for 15 euros. But whenever you purchase from this site, we recommend you buy and then buy. We usually get the electronic version, so PDF, and we don't speak Estonian, so English for us, for you, maybe different. And then we usually get a multi-user license. So that way we also can um, download the, the document and we can print the document and we can save it in different places on our um, internet in the company. And then we add that to cart. So that's how we purchase things. And I recommend going to this site um, so you can purchase uh, your procedures. Not all of them are cheaper. So we have one here on the list that's not cheaper. This standard right here, this is uh, a a standard for how to validate uh, software for quality systems. So this particular link, it takes you to an iso.org website and you can purchase from that website. Uh, the other ones like 1345, that's the Estonian website. You can buy it cheaper there. If you wanna buy uh, a procedure for validating your software uh, for quality system, we actually have a procedure for that software tool validation procedure. You can click on that and it'll take you to a different page on our website. Um, so those are the different links. And now let's show you the actual procedure itself. Here's the calibration procedure. So at the top, you see D8. That means it's draft eight that we've created. This is our internal tracking number. We use that to identify how many drafts we have and what's the most current one. So the, one of the first things you do is you delete that draft eight and you'd approve the procedure. You'd indicate the date you approve it. You change the name to from my name to your name and you'd change the logo to your company logo. 
And then wherever you see company name, you'd put your company name. Down below, you would indicate the date you're approving the procedure, the document change number. If you keep a log of document changes and approvals, you'd add that log number. You'd update the person here. And the people that are gonna be responsible, you might not have somebody with the title quality manager. It might be director of quality or vice president of quality or a quality document control manager or something different. So put the title that you use in your company here. Uh, down below, it goes through details of what should be done for calibration of equipment, monitoring and measuring of the calibration process. So all the processes we have monitoring and measuring of that process. We have training and retraining requirements here. We have risk management. So we've applied risk to all our procedures. We have a risk-based quality system. And this explains the potential mistakes that could occur in the process that would make it ineffective and what risk controls we put in place for it. And last but not least, the records. And you would add over here in the storage and retention, if it's an electronic storage location, what the URL is. If it's a paper location, you're going to indicate where are you storing those paper records. So that's what you get in this procedure. There's also a calibration equipment log that's included. I think that's mentioned at the very beginning here. So right here, we indicate form eight is the non-conforming material report. If you had something out of calibration, we have the equipment register. That's the log I was talking about. And it references a couple other procedures that are related and have cross references in this procedure. So that's what you get when you purchase this. Um, one of the questions I get all the time, so the people will look on the page. Uh, let me go back to the calibration page. They'll look on the page and they'll say, well, it doesn't say any here, where here, whether this is compliant with um, the latest version of whatever. So it could be ISO 1345. Well, we say 1345, 2016. What about the FDA QSR? Well, the FDA QSR has had very small changes since 1996. So I promise you it meets the requirements of 21 CFR 820.72 for calibration. But if you're gonna get a little bit tougher here, what about the Canadian requirements? Well, there isn't a specific requirement in the Canadian regulations for calibration because Health Canada requires that you become ISO 1345 certified. So they only rely on certification to the 1345 standard. Well, what about your? Everybody's asking me, oh, we just, in, on May 26, we had the MDR take effect in Europe. Is your procedure been updated for that? Well, no, there was no update required because there isn't a specific requirement in the MDR for Europe for a calibration procedure. And if you actually go to that, I've got it pulled up here, where the requirements are for the uh, European requirements, it's in Article 10. And you, it says general obligations to the manufacturer and it talks about a quality system. And down here below, they actually give you a list. So it says the quality management system shall address at least the following. Nowhere here does it say calibration. I think there are only like eight section, eight places in the entire MDR where it talks about calibration. And they're talking about the classification of class one devices that have a measurement function. And what the notified body would look at is part of the process for giving you CE marking but there isn't a specific requirement for calibration in this section of there. So there's no update that I had to do to the procedure to make it compliant with the European regulations. I hope that answers all your questions, but if it doesn't, you can go back to this page and right here near the bottom, there's a calendar thing. You just click on that and you can schedule a 30 minute meeting with me and it'll tell you what days I have available, what times, in that first initial meeting is free and you can ask about, well, how do we implement that here at our company? Ask those kinds of questions before you buy the procedure. I hope that was helpful and thank you for, for your time and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.